Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Jamel with Canvas Apparel. Got a great video for y'all today. Today I'm going to be showing y'all how I digitize uh, for making patches and hatch uh, embroidery digitizer. All right. So it's a very, very simple process. Um, it's not it's not hard at all. It's really a, a applique thing, but I'm going to show y'all the process and um, Y'all make sure y'all stick around, all right? So, we're gonna get to it. All right, everybody. So, now we are in Hatch, and we're gonna make a simple patch out of the word Diva, okay? We're gonna go up to Lettering, and we're gonna type the word uh, Diva. But I want to use a different type of uh, text, which is already coming up. Uh, this is called, this text right here is called Chicago Downtown. It's a true type font. It's not a, it is not a embroidery font. You have embroidery fonts and you have true type fonts. Um, Hatch is able to embroider true type fonts um, accurately. So. We're going to use the true type font called Chicago Downtown. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is insert a character. Um, what you want to do is you want to come up, you want to click that object, and you want to come up to insert character. And we're going to put a special looking A on the end of that text. And we're going to use this A right here with the tail on it, all right? So you're going to click that, you're going to press OK, and then it adds it right there on the end of, of your text, all right? So after we do that, we're going to make it a little bit bigger because I want this to be like a five, four and a half inch, five inch patch. So I'm going to make this four inches and usually with satin stitches once they get to a certain certain length or width you don't want it to be satin anymore so i usually change when i make them the patches that big uh word patches i change it to a tatami feel and that's what it looks like because you don't want to you don't want to try to uh embroider a huge satin stitch it, it's not going to look right it's going to make your machine do uh, long jump stitches um, if your machine is capable of doing that, all right? So you really want it to be all to time, all right? So now that we have the word that we're going to turn into a patch, what I do now is, and this is simple stuff, most of this stuff is just applique I'm doing. So we're going to create a layout. We want to create a bunch of offset outlines so we can see how patch is going to look or we want it to confirm form to the letters uh, of the, you know, our outline to conform to the letters of the word. So, whew, I'm tongue-tied today. I don't know what's going on. So, we're going to go to create layouts. We're going to create outlines and offset. So, usually when I do letters, I'm anywhere between 0.70 inches I mean, point fifty to 70 inches. Right now, I have it on 70. I have the offset count of seven offsets. So, it's going to create seven single run offsets, okay? And, you know, that's just the color, all right? So, we're going to leave it at seven. We're going to leave it at 70. We're going to click OK. And this is what it's going to look like, all right? Gonna have all your offsets. The inside stuff, all this little stuff you do not want. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to the objects panel. We're gonna click this, hold shift, and come down. I'm gonna come down to 12 so y'all can see how the rest of that stuff looks. Maybe did some cleanup. We got the stuff out of the inside. Now you have these. You don't want this. This this won't look good as a patch, all right? So you want to delete that. You want to find the best lines. Usually, the lines that's 
the last three or four lines is going to be the best one. All right, so we're going to do... We're going to do this line right here. We're going to delete those. And now, now that you have that, you want to select it, that object, and you want to go to fill. And you want to turn it, excuse me, make sure it's at the Tommy fill. All right, so we're going to move it to the top. And now we have it right there. So our next step is to turn that into an applique. Convert to applique. And now you have your applique. That's basically what pack, making patches is. It's just applique. Now, how I used to do it, I used to make a whole tatami fill and stitch the whole tatami fill out. Uh, it took long. And I thought it was a waste of thread also. So I would get like some type of fabric the color fabric I want, or maybe a pattern, or some felt, or something like that, and, you know, just do it in the applique way. So, um, what I do now is, I come up here, go to the applique setting, and I add a trim in place right there. Then I break it apart. I'm going to delete all this stuff. All right, so, for the people who are not going to do uh, your patches uh, with the plastic or with Batch Master water salutable uh, film, you can you can really this will be it for you. You know you can just go ahead do your applique, cut it out and cut around the edges of your design. But y'all came here for the clean designs. Y'all want the the super clean edges, like I like I be doing. So our next step is, I'm gonna duplicate these two, and we're gonna stitch this out. I'm gonna show y'all how it's gonna play out. We're gonna stitch this out. We're gonna duplicate those two objects and bring them down. We're gonna take these two objects here, and we're gonna bring them down to the bottom. So I'm gonna make some adjustments. I'm gonna make this zigzag. I don't want no underlay on it, and I'm gonna make that out zigzag outline about 180, okay? Maybe about 170. And then I'm gonna make hide all, sorry. Then I'm gonna make my satin. 180. Okay. Gonna have a nice outline on your uh on your patch. Remember when satin stitches are stitching, it's gonna shrink a little bit. So that's why I, I my width of my satin stitches are anywhere between uh well everything is in inches. If I put it in metric, the width of my satin stitches are between uh, 20 millimeters, 40 millimeters. I mean, not the width, I'm sorry. Between uh, 1.50 millimeters to 3.0 millimeters, okay? That's the width of my stitches. So if you do it in inches, I'm anywhere between 150 and 180. So... This is the part that's very important. And even when people do puff hat embroidery, this is important. You want to change your stitch spacing because as it's doing a satin stitch, you want your satin stitch to be nice and tight, right? Because what's going to happen when it's doing a satin stitch, it's going to cut the plastic. Just like when you're doing uh, uh, embroidery, puff hat embroidery. A lot of people don't change their uh, stitch spacing, and that's the reason why you have stuff sticking out the side of your, uh, your satin stitch. So it's important to change the stitch spacing. I usually change mine to like 0.8 or 0.9 inches. 
Drop chat didn't change it. So let's do 0.9 inches. You're going to have a very tight satin stitch. It's going to take longer to embroider, but once it finishes embroidering, you're going to have a, a, a nice clean edge. Your edge is going to be something like this. You may have a few pieces of plastic sticking out, but you take your, uh, your heat gun and it melts it away. Okay. But other than that, the same thing with puff hat embroidery. Make sure you have your satin stitch spacing. Make sure you tighten it up so it can cut that that foam. If you don't have that uh, stitch spacing tight enough, it's not going to cut that foam. If you don't have your stitch spacing tight enough, it's not going to cut that plastic. All right? It's going to start sticking out. So uh, I'm going to actually change it to eight. And that's it. That's basically it. Now I'm going to go to the machine. I'm going to show you all step by step how this stuff stitches out, all right? So let's get to the machine. All right, everybody. So now the first thing we're going to do is what you, let me tell you the things you want to use. You want to use, you know, the right size hoop. I have my six by nine Mahdi hoop. I have cutaway stabilizer. Do not use tailway stabilizer with this method. You want to use cutaway stabilizer. And you're going to see at the end of this video, why you want to use cutaway instead of tailway, okay? All right. Piece of fabric. I also have a plastic right here, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to hoop our cutaway stabilizer and our fabric first. Move this out the way. And if you're learning anything, anybody, please like the video. Please subscribe if you're uh, getting anything out of it. All right. So we're going to get some of these wrinkles out. Of course. And there's not no special fabric. It's just some uh, linen, uh, cotton, 50% cotton, 50% polyester. It's one of them. All right. So you have this hoop. So now we're going to take this over to the machine and put it inside the machine. All right, so we're going to put our hoop in the machine. And now we're going to come over here to our screen. And we want to set this up how we need everything to be. So right here. When we, when we do this run stitch, we want the machine to stop and we want it to come out. So that's what this button is for, frame out. All right. Uh, I'm thinking black and red. So we're going to do black, black. This is going to be black. Then we're going to frame out. So this whole thing is going to take about 15 minutes, maybe 20 to 25 minutes because you have to, you know, take the, the hoop out and I'm, I'm going to do everything on camera. You got to take the hoop out and cut the fabric and stuff like that. All right. So once we have that, <clears throat> going to go ahead and get started. Let me adjust this camera for y'all. Got the camera adjusted, and then we're gonna go ahead and get started. Gonna push the start button, all right? I already know it's gonna uh, be perfect. It's inside the red lines, so I know it's not gonna hit the side. It's not that. It's not big. All right, we're gonna get started.
All right, y'all. So that part is complete. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take this out. And we're going to come over here. And this is the part where we're going to take it out of the hoop and we're going to cut around that line right there. All right. So we're going to take it out the hoop. You don't need that no more. And I'm going to cut right along this line. Try not to cut the threads. Try to stay super close to the line, all right? That's how you're going to line this up. So let's use these scissors. Now, I'm using these scissors because... If you notice the tip of these scissors, these are Fiskars. The very tip of the scissors will cut through fabric. I love these scissors for doing patches and stuff like that. So I can get right down there, up in there, and cut that easily with these scissors. So I'd rather use these than any other scissors to do this. So we're going to cut right along that line. Try not to cut the line, but you want to cut right along the line. Make sure y'all can see. Yeah, I can get right here in that corner and cut it. That's how sharp these scissors are. I love them. All right, And right along that line. Right along. You don't really want to cut it. If you make a mistake and cut it, it's cool. As long as you don't, you know, cut too much of it. Don't cut on the line. Cut right above it. Like, I'm making a mistake in cutting it. It's okay. As long as you don't mess it up too much. Man, if y'all liking the video, please hit that thumbs up button. Please subscribe to the channel. I looked at my analytics and 90% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. Please subscribe, y'all. That, that helps me out a whole lot. Uh, it keeps me motivated when I see people subscribing. Uh, makes me want to do more videos and show y'all more things when I see people subscribing. Uh, it, it really helps me out. It's free. It don't cost nothing to subscribe. It's free to subscribe and learn some things for free. You know, they got people out here charging for this type of, work, type of uh, stuff. They charge you to show you their techniques. They don't. So please hit that subscribe button. All right, we got the patch cut out. Now, what happens is when you cut felt, it kind of leave, leaves little fuzzies on the edge. And see in the places where I made a mistake and cut the line, you know, you see that sticking out. That's going to stick out through your your satin border, okay? You, you don't want that to be there. So let's make sure I got this part. I think that's good. So I'm going to take my torch, and we're just going to hit the edges. Nothing crazy. We're just going to hit the edges, get rid of that fuzz, all right? Don't burn it. Just want to get that fuzz off. That's all you want to do. Nothing crazy. All I'm doing is getting the fuzz off. So after that, let's 
clean this up right here. Take that off. All right, we good. So we ain't got no fuzz sticking up. We ain't got no thread sticking out. Now I'm gonna hoop my plastic. All right, that looks good. Now I'm gonna hoop my plastic. Also, what you wanna do is, you wanna take your adhesive fastening spray and spray on the back, all right? This is a must. You want, you want this to stay in place when you uh putting it on the plastic. We're gonna take our hoop. Now what I do is with mine, I do use cutaway stabilizer on this part right here. Because remember I told y'all I made my satin stitches a little bit tighter. So when the machine goes, it's gonna cut right through that plastic. This stabilizer is gonna help it stay together. All right, so. I think we're gonna need like one piece. That like that. That stabilizer right there is gonna help everything stay together. Cause I have the satin stitches nice and tight, so it's just gonna cut through that plastic like a laser. This gonna help it stay together so it don't just fall apart while it's stitching out. All right, let's push that down. We have our plastic on. Now you wanna get the wrinkles out. You don't want the plastic to be wrinkled. If you want to know what this is, it's in the description. Link is in the description. Is that Lowe's? You can go get it from Lowe's. Comes in a row. All right? That's what you wanted to sound like. All right? So now I'm about to go back over to the machine. All right, so now we're over at the machine. We're going to put this in. Make sure everything's straight. And now we're going to go ahead and continue on with our design. So it's going to do the outline. All right. The outline is complete. What I usually do, I take it off. I'm going to take it off, and then we're going to bring it back over to the table. All right, so you make sure you use your basting, basting adhesive on the back of your patch so it can stick down on it. All right. And we're just going to put it right on the line. It should line up perfectly. If it don't line up perfectly, that means you did something wrong. It should line up perfect. No problems. Stick it down on there like that. All right. That's down on there. Now we have our patch on the plastic. So now we're going to go back over to the machine. I told y'all I was going to show y'all how to do it. I ain't shoot. What? I just told y'all I was going to show y'all how to do it. Now we have it on our machine. Now we can hit the start button. And now it's going to finish it up. <laughs>
right, that's complete. I'm gonna back it up. We're gonna press this. We're gonna take this out the hoop. I mean, off the machine. So now here's the part. And I see a lot of people make this mistake here. Take everything off the hoop. <clears throat> I took the stabilizer off. You don't need that. Now we're just gonna peel it off. I probably could have made my satin stitch a little bit tighter than usual. So once you get that up from, from around, you do a little bit of cleanup. Do a little bit of cleanup. You want to remove that tailway. You want to remove that plastic, all right? Do not leave the plastic on. Take it off. You want to remove it. Because if somebody decides to use heat and bond on here, guess what's going to happen? It's not going to work. If someone decides to use heat and bond on here, that heat and bond is not going to adhere to the plastic. Take the plastic off. It's going to come off just like the rest of it did. Now you can see why I use cutaway stabilizer. Cutaway stabilizer works as your fabric that you could put your heat and bond to all right or you can put use your fabric glue or your e6000 you can't put heat and bond on this plastic you can't put fabric glue or e6000 glue on this plastic all right if you decide to uh glue it on or use heat and bond take that plastic off and guess what your cutaway stabilizer is going to work as your fabric now, all right? So now, to clean these edges even more, I take my heat gun and I burn that little, the little bit of plastic pieces. I should have made my uh, satin stitch a little tighter. I think it changed the settings when I changed something on the uh, software. So... I'm going to take my heat gun, put my gloves on, because this thing get hot, man. It get super hot. This glove on. My heat gun. Make sure it gets hot. All right. I'm just going to melt the rest of that plastic off. Yeah, the plastic is gonna, it's just gonna disappear. But if I would've made my satin stitch a little bit tighter, it wouldn't have had any of this either. All right. All right, so we're gonna clean up the back. The back is, looks pretty good. Check everything out. Just glove off. All right, everything looks good. So let me get my light. Some light on that thing, man. Let's put some light on it. All right, y'all. That's the patch. Look at the edges. Clean. Turn this light down, son. Might be too harsh. There you go. Super clean. All right. Make sure you take the plastic off. Do not leave that plastic on. Heat bond will not adhere to that plastic. Take the plastic off. 
take the the and use cutaway stabilizer. Use tailway stabilizer when you hoop when you when you use the plastic, you use the tailway stabilizer. But when you first start the patch off, you use the cutaway stabilizer, all right? The cutaway stabilizer is what you're gonna put your heat and bond to. Cutaway stabilizer and the embroidery, all right? Nice, soft, thick patch is what you get. Perfect, perfect lines, all right? Nothing sticking out, nothing. All right, everybody, that's it. Um, that's how I do my patches from start to finish. I hope y'all got something out of that. I hope y'all, uh, you know, pay attention to the video and and see what I was doing and you know make your own patches. That's that's how I make mine. Um, I've made these patches. I've sold them on Etsy. I haven't had nobody ever contact me on Etsy and say, "Hey, my patch is messed up." Uh, something that's it's coming to lose none of that they come out perfect like this every time with this method you can make you, pay, you can make patches that you don't have to cut in the end you're gonna have to cut but you won't have to cut in the end and you're gonna have a super clean border or outline on your patch if you do this method all right so man like subscribe um, turn on your post notification, man. I appreciate all my old subscribers, all my new subscribers, everybody that's watching the video. Like I said, man, if you if you like if you learning anything, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video, man. Over ninety percent of people that's watching the video are not subscribed, and that's that's kind of crazy, man. Come on, man. What's your boy, man? I'm teaching y'all some stuff. People will not teach y'all. Some people is gonna hide this and keep it a secret. It will not tell you. So, um, you know, support, subscribe, and I'll see y'all on the next video. Peace out. All right.